you talk a lot about endocrine disruptors and the harm that they cause to metabolic health in general. So can you start at the top and educate our audience here about what the term endocrine disruptor actually means from a biological perspective? Absolutely. So endocrine disruptors are chemicals, usually in the environment in our plastics, and I can tell you more about where they're found, but they actually latch on to hormone receptors and they displace the hormone that's supposed to be there. So a lot of them are estrogen dis disruptors, as people talk about a lot, but all of the endocrine gland, uh, hormones can be disrupted by that. And so some of these things are like PCBs and um, poly polyvinyl phenols and some of the dental amalgam, the, fill the materials they use in dental amalgams, some of the stuff we use in our cleaning products at home. And they chemically have a similarity a part of the spot where it latches onto a receptor and they block the receptors and don't allow the actual hormones to do their job. Excellent. So what specific relevance do endocrine disruption have for people living with diabetes? Lot. Okay. So those chemicals are very harmful to the body. They cre create a situation where the liver has to work really hard to get rid of them working overtime. The liver is very important piece of the biochemical pathways that we use to maintain blood sugar balance. So when the blood sugar starts to dip too low, the hormone glucagon gets secreted and causes what's called gluconeogenesis, breakdown of glycogen to put it into the bloodstream. And there's this supposed to be this nice steady dance between insulin and glucagon to keep the blood sugar steady. When the liver can't do its job as well, that gets disrupted. In addition, those chemicals actually cause harm and inflammation to the insulin receptors. So the insulin receptors on every single cell, which are supposed to allow the insulin latched onto the sugar to get transported into the cell. And when those, just those cell receptors get disrupted, we have a condition we call insulin resistance. And it can develop over time. It also develops from other reasons, like too high of sugar and refined foods in the diet, like it overwhelms the system. But chemicals are a very big part of it. Okay, great. So when it comes to endocrine disruption, um, how is an individual supposed to know that they are endocrine disrupted? Is it literally just about blood glucose and insulin or are there other biomarkers to take into account? There are definitely other biomarkers. So a lot of women who have menstrual irregularities, PMS, dysmenorrhea, irregular cycles, just ridiculously painful and uncomfortable menopause. Menopause is not actually a disease contrary to common belief. Menopause is a transition from being fertile and to not being fertile. And that transition should not be like people want to kill each other and kill themselves because it's so miserable. So women who have specific situations, specific symptoms and conditions that are related to the female hormones definitely have a problem with that. On the male side, it can happen with testosterone. So males who suddenly lose their libido. That's not common for males to do, right? There could be other things involved, but it's endocrine system issues. It's endocrine system problems. The thyroid's super sensitive to chemicals. So a lot of folks, it's almost epidemic how many people are thyroid, hypothyroid. And the, the, the gland is just super sensitive to chemicals, you know, whether it be chlorine and other kinds of halides or chemicals in the environment, medications. So all of these kinds of things together might indicate that there's an endocrine disruption. And then you look at the lifestyle, you look at the diet. Are they eating organic foods? Are they drinking water out of plastic bottles and having that heated up in the car to release the PCBs? And are they, um, uh, what else? Tupperware containers, right? Are they cooking their food and then putting the leftovers into these containers and the containers leach, especially when the food is hot. And when you put them in the dishwasher, those chemicals in there break down and they can leach into the food. So it's all sorts of lifestyle things. So we look at what are their symptoms? How are they presenting? But what are the, the situations in their lifestyle that are causing them to get out of balance? Because we should be healthy, happy and <laughs> functioning properly, right? Yeah, I think what you're talking about here is really important. And it's a lot of nuanced stuff that sometimes people might overlook and, and just don't think is important enough, or that's why they're having these issues. So I'm, I'm glad you're talking about this. Let's go um, into detail on the exact hormones that can be disrupted in men and women. I think you mentioned a few already, but let's just go through a list of the most important ones if you can. Well, estrogen is at the top. 
I would say, you know, progesterone, insulin, testosterone, thyroid. Um, it could it technically disrupt the adrenal hormones in that these disruptive chemicals are creating a stress in the body and the adrenals kick in, you know, they're trying to save our lives. And so whether the, the stress is mental, emotional, a, a tiger chasing you, um, you know, a family situation or chemicals that you're being bombarded by chemicals in the food supply, in the air, in the home cleaning environment, those can all be factors. So those are the main ones. I mean, certainly it probably has an effect on digestive hormones. You know, there's more, dige more hormones in the digestion digestive tract than any other place in the body. It produces some, tw I know of 26, there's probably more than that. Um, and it can certainly disrupt those as well. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, so the list is, it's an extensive list, but uh, you know, it's, it's important to sort of get down to a level of enough detail that an individual is gonna understand whether or not it's insulin that could be affected, right? Which primarily happens in the case of diabetes, but also there's a whole laundry list, like you just mentioned, thyroid gland, adrenal gland, testosterone, progesterone, you name it, they can all be affected. And they all interact with insulin. So if somebody has a serious thyroid problem, you put them on the diet that you works for a lot of other people, and they don't address the thyroid, they can't get the insulin under control. They can't get the, the, the blood sugar under control. And vice versa, if you don't address the blood sugar, they can't get the thyroid under control. So there's just this intimate, I call it the hormone harmony, right? They work together and it's a symphony when, it, when it's right. And it's like a bunch of amateurs getting together and banging on instruments when it's not. <laughs> That's a great analogy. I like it. You know, we've heard you talk in the past about the hormone imbalance pyramid or the hormonal imbalance pyramid. So can you go into a little bit of detail here about what exactly that is? Yes, so a lot of times when people enter a doctor's office, practitioner's office, or they go into a program online, they're complaining about one particular problem. So I have hot flashes, doc, fix me. So you go to conventional medicine and conventional medicine says, oh, let me test your hormones. Oh, they're out of balance, here's a prescription. You go to a, a natural doctor, right? And they do similarly. They do that, oh, you've got this, let me test, that's out of balance, and let me give you bioidentical hormones, or let me give you black cohosh or some other herbs that will help stimulate some of the hormones. But I'm a big fan of asking the question, why? Like I'm three years old again, everything is why. Oh, so why are the hormones out of balance? Why is that out of balance? And we go deeper and deeper and deeper. And what I've found over the years, I've been doing this for 25 years, is that you gotta fix the digestion. If you don't get the digestion working, nothing can work because you can't get the nutrients in, you can't get the toxins out. Once you get the digestion fixed, or while you're getting the digestion fixed, you gotta work on blood sugar. Everything else relies on proper blood sugar balance. You cannot get your thyroid, adrenals, sex hormones in balance if your insulin's all over the map and the blood sugar's up and down. So the hierarchy is that the base is digestion, insulin, right? I, I sometimes like, well, one or the other or both really got to work at the, on the both of them, right? And then we can jump in and say, well, you know, is there, a, is there an issue with stress? Who doesn't have an issue in stress in our modern society? So cortisol imbalances, adrenal hormone imbalances can contribute greatly to those, um, those hormone imbalances that we're talking about, the sex hormone imbalances. And there's a very direct scientific connection is that they have the same precursor module, molecule. And so when a body's under stress, they're not gonna be making sex hormones, they're gonna be making cortisol and adrenal hormones because they may have just a limited access to the precursors. And you know, which is more important to survival, right? Getting away from a tiger or having sex and procreating, right? So the body prioritizes things, right? Survival. So if we don't address that adrenal situation and the, the, the gland itself sometimes, but the stress itself that's going into it, and then if the adrenals are out of whack and we're producing too much or too little, it affects thyroid receptors. It affects the conversion from the inactive T4 to the active T3. And so if you don't address the adrenals, you can't get the thyroid and the thyroid's related to, to estrogen production. So you can see that if you just go, oh, we're gonna address hot flashes without looking at the hierarchy we don't get well, we don't get the person well. It's just Band-Aid solution. And the, I, don't, I don't like Band-Aids, whether they're pharmaceuticals or herbals or foods. Either way, it's just a Band-Aid and we're not getting to the root cause. And then all the other stuff is, 
is after that, like the organ imbalance is like, oh yeah, you have a heart problem. Let's put you on some Hawthorne berry or let's get you on a low fat diet. But why do you have this issue going on? And that's where genes come in because you may be predisposed, but early lifestyle and we got to get that fixed. But if you don't fix those basics and those foundations, how are you going to get your heart working? If you've got blood sugar out of control, yeah, you can't, absolutely can't, right? If your digestion's crazy and spilling out toxins into the system and not getting the nutrients in, how can you get your heart fixed? You can't, right? No, so everybody great. has to look at all of this. It's, it's so logical. It's like, wh why are more healthcare practitioners not thinking this way? It's mind boggling. 